Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this video, we are going to talk about the Trevor Story 505 foot home run and the three homer night swing analysis. We're gonna be going over a couple things in this video. The main premise of this video is to show that legs versus the spinal engine. And by the end of this video, you will see quite clearly that it's the dog wagging the tail, not the tail wagging the dog when it comes to the majority of power and where that is found when we're teaching whether it is a seven-year-old or a 24-year-old. So let's start with looking at Trevor Story's 500 foot, 505 foot home run, or at least one of the three homers that he hit. This first one, he hit off of an 87 mile per hour, looked like maybe some sort of a breaking ball or change up inside and it was way off the plate as you'll see over here in the strike zone as we move through the video. And he hit this one 459 feet at 110 mile per hour of ball exit speed. A couple things we're going to take a look at is some of the things that a lot of the hitting guru number 57 out there says, do not teach this, this is terrible, do not teach this. So a couple things you'll find is you'll see these numbers pretty clearly, 27 over here, Trevor Story, and you can see him showing very well. You can also see this somewhat of a, a flexed spinal position or a hollow position or hunch position is what we call it when, when it comes to the catapult loading system. You can see him get in, into a hunched position, especially right here. If you were to freeze frame him next to Hunter Pence on a split frame, they would look pretty similar here, although Hunter Pence is a little bit more flexed here in the spine. This helps to decompress the spine. I see a lot of hitters out there on the socials that are being taught by specific people and they are straight back neutral and they are ruining their lower backs because they are compressing the vertebrae in their lower back. We want to have a nice flexed spine so we decompress it. We want to get into a hollow position which is a very strong position when it comes to gymnastics, argu arguably the best athletes in the world. So you see those that happening there, that is something that is a no-no. You don't want to show your numbers from a lot of these hitting guru number, 50, number 57s. You also see him going and keeping, we'll see a closer video or closer shot of his back foot's actually staying sideways. The back heel is not clipping over and rotating. He's not over rotating the lower half, even though this ball, as you can see, flashes up over here off the strike zone inside. As you can see him falling over here, another point is you see his front foot, and we can grab maybe another steal here. Let's see, here's a closer image of the back foot. You can see sideways, see the back heel staying behind him. Despite the fact that this ball is about a ball or two inside off the plate, and he's still getting to this, you can see that back foot is staying sideways. And one of the reasons why he probably does fall here because he can't, he's not rotating over. You can see him collapsing there. But you can see the front foot too. The front foot, if you see, is sliding, sliding, and then up here. So you can see, and I'm not trying to take away from the legs and what they contribute to power in the swings. What I tell my hitters is that 80% of power is in the spinal engine and springy fascia. So it will, the spinal engine will get you to the wall, your legs will get you over the wall. So if we're looking for where the majority of power is found, it is not in the legs. Again, I'm not taking away the value of the legs and the power of the legs, but the legs, if we're looking for a majority of power, is not found in the legs. As you can see here, and we'll see another example, I think it's a second homer, he hit 505 feet. That front foot is not even close to being on the ground. Again, the back foot is sideways. Okay, here we go, Trevor Story, and this is, the, again, the first home run, for 459 feet, just a chest view now, and you're gonna see, we saw from the pitcher's view, he's showing his numbers, you can see a big stride here, forward momentum, head movement, oh no, he's moving his head, gosh dang it, he's starting from here, and his head is moving, geez, look at how much his head's moving to landing. But what you're gonna find is, we, don't, we want early head movement if there's gonna be head movement. We do not want late head movement, which we're gonna see here. His head should stay right in the middle of the circle as he's turning, and he moves down a little bit because he's fallen over. Um, but you can see there's head movement there. There's a stride going on there. There is also back foot skipping. Okay, now I teach my hitters to skip. The hitter can get to the toe. I don't mind that. It's as long as they're not squishing bugs or putting weight on the backside. The principle here is weight shift weight shift. We're seeing a sliding of the back foot a good couple inches. We're seeing a skip, undeniable there. So those are, those are a couple things on that first swing. 
that you want to look out for here's the here's the big home run the trevor story 500 foot home run here and what you're going to see here is this pitch this is the second one again it's 92 miles an hour in another pitch inside 505 feet 112 miles an hour ball exit speed or 111.9 something like that but you can see pitch location still off the plate almost a whole ball off the plate slightly still on the inside corner you can see the same showing numbers you can see that that flexed spine right here going on into the hollow position again the abdominals are getting in a, into a contracted state which helps to decompress the lower back of the spine or take that curve that natural lordosis curve out of the lower back puts us in a much better rotational position from the lower half the pelvis and the, lum the lumbar to be able to turn from and not to wear a hole in the backs of our young hitters so we're seeing those same kind of things there uh, you're seeing at landing he, he gets to straight he pushes straight but he doesn't stay straight very long so a lot of a lot of hitting guru number 57s out there will say that front leg's got to stay straight it's got to get to straight and stay straight and we're seeing him get there and then just momentary it's a momentary and then he goes into his bend position we can see that bending in that front leg but we can see a momentary straightening here impact and then a bend and you can see that front foot coming up onto the outside, which some coaches are trying to teach that out of hitters. You can see the bottom of the foot here. Um, this naturally, this is not a teach. This naturally happens on the inner third, possibly even the middle part of the plate, um, contact in the middle part of the plate, although it's not going to be showing as much of the bottom of the foot, middle of the plate. And you should see outer third. You'll, sh you'll see the foot more flat to the ground on that. So this is not a teach. This is going to the power part of the foot. Just like the power part of the hand is the, we talk about the bottom three fingers of the top hand. The bottom part of the hand is a power part of the hand. Bottom part of the foot, it's reflexive. So the bottom part of the foot, it's the, the pinky ring and the middle finger, which you would say the ring, the middle toe would be the power power part of the foot so that is okay that's kind of like putting a stake in the ground and, and using that to hit up against when we're shifting the weight um, again you can see the back heel peeking out back here he's staying sideways with that and this homer goes a long way for a guy who is according to baseballreference.com you can see over here maybe you can't see because it's kind of out of the screen but he's 6'1 210 pounds which was an 86 so that last one was a 92 mile an hour fast fastball in 505 feet 112 miles per hour ball exit speed this third one 86 miles per hour middle of the plate towards the outer third but more middle 416 feet 108 miles per hour ball exit speed uh, let's see if we get a better view from the second one here. Anything anything new that we can see besides him showing his numbers here? This is a great view of that, which is a no-no to some of these other hitter, hitting guru number 57s. So here is the third one. You can see here in this longest home runs in Coors Field history, and I talk about 6'1", 210 pounds. Yeah, that's bigger than me. I'm 5'9", 5'10", on a good day, soaking wet, 100, 180 pounds or so. And... You can see here he's above. He just went above Giancarlo Stanton, who is a beast. Most of you know who he is, and he just went a foot above him in long dist in uh, batted ball distance. So the the idea that body mass is a good indicator, batted ball distance is false, is a myth. Bat speed is a better indicator of batted ball distance, and that is according to Dr. Alan Nathan, who does a lot, physicist who does a lot uh, as a, an expert on bat ball collisions. So here's the third one again this ball is right there middle of the plate pretty much 86 miles an hour and he's doing some of the similar things we talked about showing numbers and uh, back foot sideways and doing a good job with that front foot kind of sliding around a little let's go into the analysis portion here wanted to go over a couple things uh, watching a quadriplegic here this is a pretty known study dr serge grakovetsky uh, in this video i just want to show that locomotion and this is what this is dr serge grakovetsky's words he says that legs are not necessary for locomotion which hitting and all human movement is a form of locomotion because we move from our spine we move for, with the spinal engine he says the legs are not necessary for locomotion they are an enhancement or a supplement so this gentleman was born without legs and arms, and this is the bottom of his ischium, they call it. So it's the bottom of the pelvis. And he's explaining in this video, you're not probably going to be, be able to hear it, but Dr. Serge Grakovetsky is explaining how this gentleman walks on the bottom of his ischium. 
and because he doesn't have the legs. And what's interesting is in a moment here, you're going to see this gentleman walking across the ground. And if you were to cover up, you can cover up right now, cover up his, his shorts and you would swear that this guy has legs by the way he's moving. So again, the legs are not necessary for locomotion. They are an enhancement. Here's another entrance, interesting thing. So think about water polo. So those hitting guru number 57s out there that are legs and legs, legs and legs and legs and blah, 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 blah. It's almost to a lustful obsession. They talk about the leg or the back leg or the back hip or anything like that. Again, the hips are part of it. The hips are a third of the spinal engine. So they are important, but they are not, the lower lumbar is not made to turn. And I will put links into this video or below this video or in this blog post you'll be able to go to this link here and it explains everything the lumbar is only able to rotate or the pelvis and lumbar combination 7 to 12 degrees only the lumbar itself the equipment in the lumbar is not made or built to rotate at all only to flex and extend the only reason you get 7 to 12 degrees of rotation in the lumbar and the pelvis is because of the muscles surrounding it. So the muscles are basically moving a fixed object. The thoracic part of the spine, the major part, the 12 vertebrae in the middle of your back, connecting to the shoulders, are made to rotate, flex, and extend. And they're made to rotate 40 degrees, 4-0 in both directions. So those that say that the swing is not rotational are lying to you and they're not doing their homework. So if you watch this water polo, so here's a, here's a thought experiment you got to think about. So the fastest water polo throw, and I'm going to show you this video here in a second so you can see the, the mechanics of it. The fastest water polo throw is a Croatian Olympic water polo player, 60 miles an hour, throwing this volleyball sized water polo ball floating in water as you're seeing here. This isn't the actual throw, but this is just an example of a water polo throw. If you put a baseball in that guy's hands instead of this water polo ball, how fast do you think he can throw it? He's obviously going to be able to throw it faster because it's a smaller ball and a lot lighter. 75, 70, 80 miles an hour? I would say 80 miles an hour, 75, 80 miles an hour, something like that. And even if it was 70 miles an hour, if we think conservatively, right? Only 10 miles an hour gain, which is, I think, very conservative. I would think even closer to 80 miles an hour. So floating in water, throwing a baseball, 80 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. Now, top of the food chain, MLB pitchers throw a ball 100 miles an hour with gravitational reaction forces, with the ground. So are you telling me that there is only an added 20 to 30 miles per hour to velocity, pitching velocity, out of the water? So we saying that there's a, that the power, the majority of power is in the upper half. Now watch this throw, water polo throw in slow motion. He is not standing on the ground. His hips have and feet have nothing to push off of. There's no impulse strike, strike impulse. He is throwing and rotating using springy fascia, using his spinal engine. The majority of power, 80, 70 to 80% is found in the spinal engine. The legs are only 20 to 30% of it. This is hard to deny. And I would love somebody out there who loves lustful obsession with the legs and the back hip and the back leg and all this stuff. I would love them to explain why this is. Again, the legs are not necessary for locomotion. They are an enhancement as Dr. Dr. Serge Grakovetsky says. Now, one more thing I want to end with in this video, in this Trevor Story 500 foot home run video. Again, we're talking about the legs versus the spinal engine and where does the majority of power come from? Now, check out this Anthony Rizzo homer. Anthony Rizzo fell to his knees and still hit a home run. Now, watch this. It's going to play it in slow motion here in a second. You can see it goes over the fence there, so it's a homer. Front foot slipping. Hasn't even swung the bat yet. Front foot slipping. Boy, that makes it really tough. All those ground reaction force guys. Look at that foot slipping. Hasn't even started to swing yet. Front foot slipping. How in the heck is he able to do this? Spinal engine and springy fascia. So again, this is the Trevor Story 500 foot home run video. I hope it was 
in Lightning to some point. We were analyzing the three homer night, the swing analysis of this. We talked about the legs versus the spinal engine, where the majority of power comes from. We went over the quadriplegic gentleman and how he uses his spinal engine to walk. We talked about the water polo throw and the thought experiment there, and that the legs are not necessary for locomotion. They are an enhancement, and we ended on the Anthony Rizzo video. Make sure that we're swinging smarter by moving better, and before I let you go. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly, and it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.